Kimball, and I'm going to be talking about curb negotiations, so basically how people walk up curbs, and I'm going to be looking specifically at um, dynamic stability. All right, I'm going to start off first with some statistics. Um, I know falls don't seem like a really big thing, but um, in the United States, there's a second leading cause of unintentional death. Count for approximately 8.9 million trips to the emergency room. So they're a really big thing, and so anything, any research we can do in that area to prevent such things is very important. Also, um, when you look at um, humans, there's two ways you can look at. There's two types of tasks. Task. There's static tasks, which is like sitting and standing, like what Lizzie looked at, and then there's dynamic tasks, which is walking, walking up curbs, you know, um, stepping over obstacles things like that. And so um, for me personally, I'm going to be looking at um, the dynamic area. All right. Um, the first um, thing that I'm going to talk about is balance. It's very important to define balance. And balance is um, really basically just the ability to attain, um, keep your center of mass over your, um, your base of support, which is why when you like lean off to the side, you begin to fall because the center of your mass has left that center of support. Um, how your body stays in balance is you have four types of systems. You have your vision, obviously, watching, looking, you get vision input, auditory, sounds, um, you have proprioceptive, which is your touch. So as you're walking like along on the ground, your feet are contacting the ground, you have that. And then you have um, vestibular, which is like your relation, um, your body in relation to other things. So yeah, um, your body takes those four systems it takes um, the input from them, and your brain interprets them, and then you get motor output. Yeah. All right. Um, when it comes to biomechanics, uh, there's been a lot of research done. So one of the most important things to do first is look at other people's research and then base, decide what you're going to do. You can either confirm someone's research, do a study, practically do what they did and just confirm and get the same thing, or you can do new research, which is what we did. On this first one up here, the controlled uh, adaptive locomotion. That was a study that looked specifically at like how vision affected um, your balance and walking. So what they did is they had four different um, stages. They had one where there was no um, blocked vision; it was just normal vision. And they had people step up a curb and step over an obstacle. And then the second step, they had the same thing with the vision, but they had like an obstacle. Uh, excuse me, object cue, so the person knew where the ob um, obstacle was at. And then the next two, they wore goggles, which obstructed the view of the lower limbs. And on that one, they also had one that had an obstacle cue and one that did not. And what they found in this study is that it's uh, far more important for the um, person to see the obstacle than it is to see their lower limb. And another study which looked at um, static stability, I'm looking at dynamic stability, was um, the measure of postural steadiness. And um, this map, which looks really crazy, is actually um, the center of pressure for a person who is standing um, for a set amount of time. And even though like, when you're standing still, you feel like you're not moving at all, what your body's actually doing is gently swaying in like all different directions, which is what this map shows. And so um, they just prove that like your body sways and it's correcting yourself. And so, I was just been looking at like how that happens when you're walking. All right, everything, um, all the studies have been performed at um, Dr. Hall here at the University of Northern Colorado in the biomechanics lab. As you can see here, this is kind of the setup um, for the specific test we did. This is the walkway. It's approximately 10 meters, and you can kind of see. I'll talk about later. Here's some force plates and some the timing system. So yeah, it just kind of gives you a general idea of where the site took place. All right, the materials we use, we use a Micon, uh, Micon motion capture system, force plates, and a timing system. There we go. Okay, um, for all the participants in our study were volunteers. They came from the Well County area. And these are their approximate um, masses and height. All right. On the first system that we use that I'm going to talk about is the Vicon motion capture system. So what this is, and Lizzie kind of talked about it, was it's um, a system that you put on and they have these um, markers that you place all over your body. There's uh, 41 different ones. And they're coated in a reflective material. 
So um, you have these 10 of these uh, cameras placed around the room and they pick up those the reflective materials off the markers. So when you're doing the test, it's very important that like everywhere else in the room, there's no other like reflective material or like um, anything that can reflect light because the, these cameras will pick that up and then they will, when you go to um, put it on a computer screen and generate it, those will show up and kind of they can mess with the data a little bit. These two pictures just kind of show where you put those um, 41 different sensors on the legs and arms and chest and head and see what not. Okay, force plates. Um, we used, in this study, we used three force plates. There's two on the ground, which are these two here, and then there's one, um, it's right now, in this current picture, it's not, but there's, we had a curb built, it was built into a curb. And so they would step on these two and then up onto this third one, which was behind it. Um, these force plates, they measure um, your center of pressure. And so, yeah, that's what we looked at. All right, um, this, this is the timing system that we also had set up. So when this uh, was going on, they were, um, the test subjects were, had the Vicon motion system motion system hooked up, so they were all in the suit with all the sensors on, and they walked across each force plate, and then these um, timing systems timed how long it took them to cross the curb. So there's a laser that goes in between each of these, and it kind of makes a beeping sound as you cross it, and it starts a timer, and then once you exit, there would be two more behind uh, where the curb would be over here, and then once you cross it, it stops, it, it stops timing. All right. Our methods, so we had a 10 meter walkway and we had our participants walk at two different speeds. So we had them do a self-selected um, pace, which is just like their normal walking pace, what they felt comfortable doing. And then we had them do a fast pace, which was, um, we still wanted them to feel comfortable, but we didn't want them running, so that's what we told them and that's what they did. Um, in a proper trial, like an ideal trial, um, the people would, uh, our participants would walk across and step on each force plate individually. Um, if we if we did, I think it depended on the um, per, uh, person, but we did multiple trials. We did um, I think approximately 15 to 20 per person, and then out of there we took uh, the three um, best uh, fast pace and slow pace ones. And so um, as you can see, there's the two force plates there and that one there. Um, if we were in all those trials, we weren't able to get them to step like on each plate because, well, the top world's not perfect. Um, what we had to do is we had to take the information from the first force plate and the second force plate and average them so that way we could get um, an accurate thing since half their foot was on one force plate and half on the other. Okay. What I looked at specifically were the center of mass and center of pressure. So um, I kind of talked about it already, but like when you're standing, you have a center of uh, mass, and like Lizzie said, the center of pressure is in relation to the ground reaction forces. And so when you're standing up, for the most part, your center of pressure and center of uh, mass are approximately in the same area. But like when you go to walk, your center of pressure is like more out in front, where you, your center of mass is further back behind in the middle of your body. And so what I wanted to look at is when people walk up and down or walk up a curve, like where in relation is the center of mass and the center of pressure pressure to one another. This is kind of a, an idea once we um, process the data, this is the Vicon system, and I have a video. I think it only loaded the first part, but you get the general idea. This is what we looked at on the computer. So this is the image that's generated from those um, placing all the markers on the screen. And if the video is fully loaded, um, you would see the person like walk up and over this curve. So what we do is we look at this and from this computer agent, we can also check and see if they like stepped on both of the four spikes or one individually and whatnot. And so we use this quite a bit. Okay. All right. Our purpose was um, we really wanted to look like a dynamic facility because there hasn't been much research in that area. And so um, we were really curious to see like if when you have if there's a difference between the ground people walk on and the curb. And um, also, 
to see like when they're walking their regular pace versus fast pace, if there's any difference between that center of mass and that center of pressure and see like where they are in relation to one another. All right, so what we did is from the Vicon system, the Vicon system takes, it's a, I think it's 100 hertz, I believe, so it's collecting data um, 100 times per second, and the force plates are uh, collecting data at 2,000 hertz, so 2,000 times per second. And what uh, you get is you get these like massive Excel sheets, you plug them into the Excel, and um, it lists the data for various things. So what you do is you take them and you um, take the time from the timing system and take that into the um, results that you've got here. And so you, you take from the time the heel struck on the very first step and you find that time in relation to the data that came out of the Vicon and the force plate. And then you find um, the, from the time the toe stepped off the force plate and then you take that data in between there. And so the data that I took out was the uh, um, uh, center of pressure and center of mass and I looked at the curb, curb heel, um, uh, I looked at the contact of the heel, uh, heel on and off prior to the curb and the one on the curb. So this is just the uh, um, data that I processed. Alrighty, um, I took that data then and I'm, I put it into the graph like so. And what you can see from this, you see you have your average excursion. So what I did is I took this stands for ground heel strike, ground uh, so ground heel strike in the x direction, which is going to be left to right, and then there's ground heel strike in the y direction, which is front and back, and then there's uh, curved heel strike in the x direction, curved heel strike in the y direction, uh, ground toe off in the x direction, ground toe off in the y direction, uh, curved toe off in the x direction, and curved toe off in the y direction. And this graph, what it's specifically looking at um, is the difference between the slow pace and the fast pace to see if there's any difference. And as you can see, there's no significant difference in between um, the slower and faster paces. So when people, um, when all of our participants were walking, they did approximately, their, their center of mass and center of pressure were not varied in between the two different speeds that they were walking. All right, um, another thing that I looked at was the average excursion of the ground and curved heel strikes in the x-direction, and yet again, you can see there's not that much of a difference, and this uh, slow pace is higher in the one, and there's, in this one, so there's, there's nothing significant to be pulled from that. So, um, when their, when their heel strikes, both on the ground and the curb, in between fast and slow pace is approximately the same. So, here is the other thing I looked at, the uh, average extrusion of the ground toe off, and yet again we can see that there's not really any significant difference. It's pretty much the center of mass and center of pressure are approximately in the same general area for both of those. Okay, um, another one I looked at was the uh, extrusion of the ground heel strike in the Y direction, and this is the one where we found like a significant difference, the only one, and you can see um, we're looking at, uh, compare the two yellows and the two reds, um, the reds are the faster pace and the yellows are the self-selected pace. And you can see how much like what a significant difference that is. And what we noticed is that in the heel, um, in the curved heel strike, it was much um, smaller between the center of mass and center of pressure were a lot uh, close together. And typically when your center of mass and center of pressure are close together, you're more stable. And so um, what we can draw from that is that um, the person, uh, all of our participants, when they stepped up on the curb, took a shoulder step up on the curb, then over here. So. Alrighty. Um, yeah, there's no difference in the speeds, um, other than the only difference was um, the shoulder step up on the curb. Alrighty. For our limitations for this, uh, we the problem was we only tested healthy adults, so we didn't test any elderly or anybody with diseases or anything. Also, um, in future trials, we'd like to maybe try a handrail, because that's going to add um, more like another proprioceptive sensor, because you're touching the railing to see if that would have any effect on it. These are my references, the studies that I looked into. These are my acknowledgments. I'd like to give a huge uh, shout out to Abby Ferris for putting up with me for the last six weeks. I mentor, she has a lot of help. Um, 
I like to give a shout out to Sean, also my advisor. He helped me revise my paper and my PowerPoint and whatnot. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, Noble Energy, my sponsor, for sponsoring my time here as well as my research. Um, I would, it wouldn't have been possible without them. Then I'd like to thank Lori Ball and all the FFI staff um, for always being there for support and just having a great time. And I'd just like to thank my friends and family for allowing me to be here. Thank you. <laughs>